praise the Lord. First Kings, first Kings chapter three, first Kings chapter three. Let's begin at verse number 16. First Kings chapter three, beginning at verse number 16. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the one woman said, O my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house. And I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also. And we were together. There were no stranger with us in the house, save with two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and, and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I, when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, nay, but the living is my son and the dead is thy son. And this said, and this said, no, but the dead is thy son and the living is my son. Thus spake before the king. Then said the king, the one said, this is my son that liveth, and thy son is the, the dead. And the other say, nay, but thy son is the, de the dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two, and give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman, whose the living child was, unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine or thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. Amen, amen, amen. Today I want to talk to you about the love of a mother. The love of of a mother. Amen. <laughs> I, I think we need to great, gain a greater perspective on motherhood. Amen? amen. Amen. On how much our mothers love us. Amen. To cause us to have a greater appreciation for our mothers. Amen. Now, now, you know, my mother passed away uh, over 26 years ago and uh, I, I wish my mother was here. Amen. And many of you have your mothers here right now that we got to show a greater appreciation and a greater respect for our mothers. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Now go, go to John chapter number 10, John chapter 3, John chapter number 3. See, because I believe that the Spirit of God will inspire you today to look at motherhood from a different perspective. Amen? As we go through the Scripture to see how much mothers love us. Amen, amen, amen. Now, now, there are four honorable traits that I want to suggest to you today when it comes down to mothers, okay? First of all, mothers are a model of the love of God. Amen. Mothers are a model of the love of God. In John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but what? See, we really learn from mothers how God loves us. Because mothers love unconditionally. Oh, my God. It doesn't matter what you've done. Mama's going to love you. Woo, Jesus, amen. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter number 6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see when, I, when I look at mothers, I can see God in mothers. Because they love like God loves. Amen. Hallelujah. See, when you give birth to a child, you know, even if the child messes up, you still love them unconditionally. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Look at verse number 5. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. That's how mothers love. With all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their might. So when I think about mothers, I think about the love of God. Amen. The second trait I see in mothers, it, look, watch this now, because mothers demonstrate care. Mothers demonstrate protection 
and mothers demonstrate nurturing. Amen. That's where that love comes in at. When, when we talk about the love of God, because we see God cares for us. We see that God protects us and we see that God nurtures us. Amen. And that's how mothers love. Just like that. Amen. Now, the second the second thing I see in mothers is that they are a model of the laws of God. Amen. They are a model of the laws, L-A-W-S, of God. Now, here's what I mean by that. The first teacher that we have is our mothers. Amen? The first teachers that we have. And the first people that teach us how to love God is our mothers. Amen? You still there in Deuteronomy chapter 6? Look at verse number 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. That sounds like mama teaching us, amen? See, see, how many of y'all remember your mother when you were a little kid, used to kneel down by your bed and help you learn how to pray? Amen? Mamas, mamas taught you that. Amen? See, so, so when I, when I look, think about motherhood, I think about how they demonstrate and share with us the laws of God. How mama actually taught me how to pray. How mama taught me the importance of loving God with all my heart, soul, and mind. How mama taught me that, look, it's no excuse not to go to church. Amen. I don't know, look, I don't know if y'all mama was like my mama. But if I didn't go to church, I couldn't go outside. I, try, I tried that one, one Sunday. I tried to act like I was sick. Amen. And then once uh, once church was over, they got back home. I said, Mama, the Lord has healed me. Because I knew I wasn't going outside. I wanted to go play marbles with RC. And Mama said, no, if you're, you're sick at, when, when church started, you're going to be sick all day long. You're not going outside. Amen. So Mama taught me the value of, look, I got go to I gotta go to church and worship God with all my heart, soul, and mind. So when I think about the laws of God, I, I think back to my mama. That this woman taught me and trained me in the things of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The, 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 third, the third honorable trait that I see uh, in mothers is that they are the avenues for the life of God. They are the avenues for the life of God. Go to Genesis chapter number one. Genesis chapter number one. People might ask, Pastor, why do you always make the statement that without mothers we would not be here? <laughs> Amen. As brilliant as man is, they have not found a way, amen, to bring a human being into this earth without a woman. So without women, without mothers, we would not, none of us would be here. Amen? See, see, all the technology that we have, they still cannot find a way that without the seed of a woman and the seed of a man to bring a child into this existence. Amen. So mothers are the avenues of the life of God. Amen. God planned it from the very beginning that this is how it was going to happen. Genesis chapter 1. Look at verse number 28. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 28. Watch this now. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Look what he says. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So God says here that in order for me to be fruitful, I gotta have, I gotta have a mother. Go to chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3. Look at verse number 16, Genesis chapter 3, verse number 16. Look what he says here. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Amen? So, so God says that in conception, in delivery, that that was going to be some pain. All right? But watch this now. Without you mothers, we could not have life. Even though you might face some pain, you're giving birth to life. Woo, praise the Lord. Amen? So you represent the life of God. And then the fourth characteristic, that honorable trait I see is uh, uh, you, you represent, you testify of the, of the love of God. Amen. 
Amen. Mm -mm -mm. Go to uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 3. Watch this now. You are our example, mama. Our examples. Woo, praise the Lord. See, you got to understand that when you have children, they are looking up to you to be their example. Amen. They shouldn't want to be like anybody else but you. Who praise the Lord. Verse number one. First Peter chapter three, verse number one. Likewise, you wives be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the lifestyle. That's what I meant to say. Amen. The lifestyle of the wives. So, so you, you could win over folk just based upon your life. Amen. 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 Go to Titus chapter number two. Titus chapter number two. Amen. Yeah, we learn how to live for God based upon how we see mama living. Amen. These are the honorable traits that I see in motherhood that I could, I could if I see my mama living right. I can learn how to live right. Live righteous, live holy, based upon what I see my mother living. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter number 2. Look at verse number 1. Watch this now. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior of, of as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blas blasphemed. So I see that if your lifestyle, your lifestyle, mama, can impact generation after generation after generation, amen? Your lifestyle, amen, amen. Now, now, now watch this now. So, so when, I, when we look back at the story of the two women, Back in First Kings, both of them were pregnant at the same time. One had a child. Three days later, the other one had a child. But one rolled over her child, and that child died. She decided that I'm going to take the dead baby and replace the dead baby with a live baby. So I'm going to put my dead baby with this other woman, and I'm going to take the live baby. Okay. But when it came down to the judgment, when, when they had to go to the king to find out who, who was the real mama, the king came up with a, an idea that, okay, well, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to split this child up in two. Amen? Going to give you half of it and going to give you half of it. And the real mama said, no, I love my child too much. Let her take the child and let him live. That's love. Amen? And the other lady said, I don't care what happens. The child could die too. It don't matter to me. And that's how we recognize really how much love a mother has for that child. When they're willing to give up everything. Somebody say everything. So watch this now. What, what does a mother provide for us? First thing I want to submit to you today is they provide sacrifice for us. How many times have mothers gone without in order for their child to have? Ooh, Jesus, amen. So, mama, when we think about you, we want to appreciate you and thank you for sacrificing for us. That you made a decision to go without so I might have. Oh, my goodness. She went without shoes so you could have shoes. She went without clothing so you could have clothing. She went without eating so that you can eat. Ma Mama, we just appreciate you. Oh, Jesus, amen. For making the sacrifice for us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Mamas, will, oh, oh, watch this now, are willing to rescue their children from danger and trouble. Okay? Now, I'm just talking to y'all through some of these stories. You remember Moses' mama? She had the baby, but, but, but something was going on in the land. And so, so, so Moses' mama knew that he was going to be in danger. And so in order for her to rescue him, 
She had to let him go. Oh, my goodness. She puts him in a, a bassinet, puts him on the river, and then sends him down the river. Now, his sister watching this thing play out. So once she gets to Pharaoh's daughter, the sister asks Pharaoh's daughter, hey, do you need somebody to take care of her? I know a good child provider. And I'll go get her for you if you really want me to. But she was willing to rescue her child by letting him go. Oh, my goodness. What do mamas do for us? They protect us when we get in danger. Amen. We find ourselves in trouble. Amen. Okay, okay, okay. How, how, brothers, brothers, let's, let's be honest. How, how many of your daddies told you, if you go to jail, don't call me? But your mama said, you, look, if you, call me. You find yourself in trouble, you call me. <laughs> Why? Because I got to go get my itty bitty. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Third, third, third th thing I see when it comes down to motherhood is that mamas never give up, on, get, never give up on their children. They never give up on their children. Okay, okay. You remember the shooter mite woman? The shooter mite woman, she sensed that the prophet was a man of God. So she goes to her husband she, and she asks her husband, hey, can we build a room on our house for the man of God so that when he comes in town, watch this now, he has a place to stay. Husband agreed with that. They build a room. And the man of God says, well, what is it that you want, you know, that you don't have? She said, I, I, I'm good, man of God. He said, no, 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 no. Uh, the servant said, she don't have a child. So the man of God promises her, by the time I come back next year, you're going to have a child. She said, man of God, don't play with me now. This is a serious matter. He said, nope, nope, mark my word, by the time I come back next year, you're going to have a child. So the Bible says she had the child. The child goes out into the field with daddy, has, I believe, a concussion, amen. Daddy tells the servant, bring the son back to his mama, okay. Mama gets the boy, bypasses her room, bypasses his room, takes the boy to the man of God's room and lays him on the bed. Why? Because he died. Now, this, this is a story that you see a mama that don't give up. She know her son is dead. But she says, I done poured into the man of God. I got to call, call on the favor that's on his life to come help my child. Oh, Jesus. She tells the servant, get the fastest horse. We got to go see the man of God. And watch it. Here's how, here's how I know she didn't give up on her son. Her son is dead. Okay. She's riding to go see the man of God. The man of God sees her far off and says, it's all well. And the mama, knowing that she haven't given up on her child, she said, all is well, man of God. Now, she knows, Sister Porter, that the child is dead. But I'm not giving up on my child. Amen. There's an anointing on his life that it got to get on my son's life. The man of God is getting back to her house, lays upon her child. Amen. And believe that what he, what God had promised was going to come to pass. The child sneezes seven times. He wake, the child wakes up and he go give him back to his mama. Because she didn't give up on him. Okay, 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 okay. Let me see if I can make this a little bit more personal. When you were out there doing your own thing, your mama was praying for you. Oh, Jesus, amen. Because she wasn't going to give up on you. Everybody else may have given up on you, but mama. Never gave up on you. Yeah. Who Jesus, amen, 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 amen. Another thing mothers provide, watch this now. <laughs> Another thing mothers provide is that they stand in the gap for their children. Uh-uh-uh. Go on, I want you to see this, Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Amen. She becomes an advocate for her children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. An advocate. Matthew 15. Look at verse number 22. Matthew 15, verse number 22. <laughs> Watch this now. And behold, a woman of, of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. <laughs> but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. They weren't crying after y'all. They cried after him. Okay. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it at the dogs. Now, now watch this now. So, so she comes to Jesus. Jesus turns her away. But this, girl, this woman got so much tenacity that she said, look, look, I got, I'm an advocate for my child. My child needs some help. My daughter is filled with devils. And I know you can do something about it, Jesus. And even if you tell me, you call, call me out my name, look, look, you put me down, look, I'm still going to be an advocate. Verse number 27. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Her mother was an advocate for her, amen. She stood in the gap. Hallelujah. Who praise the Lord, amen. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Next thing I see, next thing, next, next thing I see is that mothers stimulate, stimulate their children for success. There's something about a, mo a mother who wants better for their child than what they had. Now, I, you know, I could only share my, my, my testimony with y'all. I, I, I remember growing up in CDS projects. And my mother would always remind us that this is not the end. Amen. Don't look at your condition right now. Better is possible. Amen. Don't settle for this. And we would move from one location to another location to another location, always getting a little bit better. Why? Because she was stimulating us that better was possible, that success was possible. Amen. Story was told in the Bible that that was a woman whose husband died. And they were coming to repossess all of her stuff. The debt came up, up. And now they were going to take her children to be bondsmen. But the mama said, I'm going to show you how to be successful. Because God, the man of God, gave me a creative idea. Go borrow all the vessels that you can from all the neighbors. Get everything that you can. The Bible says that when they got together, they closed the door and they filled up every pot until there was no more. Then... As the instruction came from the man of God, go sell the oil, pay your debt, and live off the rest. That mama taught them how to be businessmen. Amen. How to be successful. See, see, mamas, you ought to be pushing your children to be further advanced than you are. Amen. That they should be successful in life. Now watch this now. But children, listen to me, children. Don't forget it was your mama that pushed you. Woo, Jesus, amen, amen. amen. Woo. Well, see, this thing is personal for me. <laughs> amen. It's personal because I remember calling my mother and just telling her thank you. I didn't understand all the stuff she did while I was, while, while, you know, because it seemed like I caught all the whoopings. My curfew, instead of going up, came down. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> you know, 12 o'clock was the curfew. Well, it, I was, my, my junior year, I had a higher curfew than my senior year. My senior year was 11 o'clock. I had to be in the house at 11. I'm like, hold up a second. Last year was 12. But she was, she was showing me, son, you can be successful, but you got to make proper decisions. And oh, so, so many... Children don't understand that your mama's trying to push you towards success. That's why she's telling you to get the grades. Get your education. Amen? Because you could have whatever you want in life if you do what it takes to get there. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Uh-huh. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter number 1. Another thing I see in mothers is that they will sway their children to live righteous. Amen. Hallelujah. See, see, mothers understand that we are the salt and light of this earth. And you just can't live any kind of way to make impact. Amen. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter one. Second Timothy chapter number one. 
Look at verse number 5, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 5. Look what it says. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that thee, that is in thee also. So Paul was telling Timothy, hey, hey, I see your lifestyle, but I see, first of all, it was in your grandmother. Then secondly, I seen that it was, it was in your mama. And now I see it in you. Oh, my goodness. So watch this now. Mamas, if you're living right, you could pass down that trait to your children and your children's children. Woo, Jesus, amen, amen, amen. Amen. See, see, your children don't have to live a life of misbehavior because if they see you doing it right, they can do it right. Now, I'm not trying to suggest that the, your kids won't act foolish and do some, some dumb things, amen? They will. They'll go through their dumb days. But what you put in them will come back up. Train up a child in the way it should go. And when he is old, he won't depart from it, amen? You teach them to live righteous, and guess what? They're going to live righteous. Amen. It's up to you. Amen. It's up to you, mom. It's up to you. It's up to you. Uh-huh. Another thing I see, another thing I see, watch this now. A real mother will surrender her children back to the Lord. Because you understand that that child is just a gift. You don't have ownership, you have stewardship. See, every child you have, you're just a steward over that child. See, Hannah is a great example, amen, of Lord, if you just bless me with this child, I'll give this child back to you. Amen. And see, many people have a, a misunderstanding about dedication and christening. You know, people, people bring their child, they have a baby, and they want to, you know, bring that baby up before the Lord. And they say, well, we want to christen our baby. No, it ain't christening. It's dedication. Okay? They have to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ to become a Christian. As an infant, they have no clue. So what we do is we dedicate that child back to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. So Hannah said, God, if you would just bless me with this child, I'll dedicate his life back to you. Amen. And a real mother understands I have to give back to God what he has blessed me with. Amen. See, people just think it's a tradition. They don't understand the significance of what they're doing. Okay. Because I'm dedicating this baby back to him. God, I said if you would just give him to me, I'll give him back to you. And the mother understands that. I don't own this child. I'm just a steward over this child. I'm, I'm to raise this child until they get to a point where they can get, get to moving out of my house. And some of y'all say, get to moving faster, faster, faster. <laughs> Amen? But, but, but watch this now. You understand that you got to give back the child. So, so what, 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 what are some of the rewards for me? For honoring my mama. Amen? For seeing her as the woman God placed in my life. What are some of the rewards for me? Go to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. See, when you respect and appreciate and love your mother, you get some benefit out of this thing. Okay? Exodus chapter 20. Look at verse number 12. Now, let me say this, children, 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 let me say this. It's not enough to just honor your mother on Mother's Day. Thank God for this day. But this is not the only day that you should be honoring, honoring your mother. You honor your mother every day. Hallelujah. Look at verse 1. Y'all making me work hard this day. Exodus 20, verse number 12. Honor thy father and thy mother. Here's the promise, that thy days may be long upon the, uh, upon the land, which the Lord thy God was. See, you can have a long life if you learn how to honor your mother and your father. Amen? No, no, if you really learn how to honor them. Not just on one day. That you honor them all the days of their lives. Listen, for those of you, look. For those of you who still have your mother, I'm telling you, man, there are days, there are days that I, 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 you know, I wish my mom was back. 
days just for, her, just, just for me to hear her voice. And you appreciate, look, 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 and you don't even appreciate your mama that's here right now. And it kind of it kind of bothers me because if your mama was gone, then you'd be the one jumping in the casket. And you have her right here, right now, that you could tell her, Mama, I love you. Mama, I appreciate you. Mama, I thank you for what you've done for me. I thank you for being my advocate. I thank you for loving me like God loved me. And sometimes y'all just sit on the sideline just like, oh, well, that's just mama. But if you ever lose her, who Jesus. But if I honor my mother, I, I, I live long on the earth. The second thing I see, the second promise I see is that there's a reciprocal blessing that comes to me when I honor my mother. Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 6. Yeah. Jeff, I, I, I don't think they understand that, that as long as they got their mama right now, they ought to honor her. Oh, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 6. David, it's good to see you, man. Look at verse number 8. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 8. There's a reciprocal blessing that comes when I honor my mother. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Uh-oh. Young people, listen to me now. Listen to me. If you dishonor your mother, when you have kids, you set yourself up for the reciprocal. I mean, these principles are, are valid in the scriptures. That, that whatever, I, whatever good thing I do unto another, the same thing going to be done to me. So as I honor my mother, when you get a child, praise the Lord, then that child will honor you. Amen, amen. The reciprocal. Okay, okay, watch this now. Go to John 13. John chapter 13. John 13. Uh-huh. John chapter 13. Look at verse number 20. John chapter 13, verse number 20. Praise the Lord. Amen. John 13. Look at verse number 20. Look what he says. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Now that word receive means to honor. So it'll read this way. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that honoreth whomsoever I send honoreth me. And he that honoreth me honoreth him that sent me. So watch this now. God allow your mother to be your mother. So he says that if you will honor her, you honor me. And, if, if, and then that honor not only goes to me, but it also goes beyond me, it goes to my father. Ah. So, 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 so watch this now. So when I honor my mother, I'm really honoring God. Who Jesus is born. I mean, I mean I, uh, see, see, because see, my mother is a gift from God. And so if I honor her, God says, you're really honoring me. So all y'all that's mad at your mama, y'all need to get over that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't, look, look, hold on a second. I sense it in my spirit. And I'm not just saying this to be saying stuff. I'm saying it because the spirit of God have me say this. Some of y'all upset with y'all mamas. Y'all need to clear it up. Whoever that's for, go to 1 Samuel chapter number 2. 1 Samuel chapter number 2. 1 Samuel chapter number 2. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter number 2. Look at verse number 30. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Verse number 30. Look what he says here. 
Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy, thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, be it far from me, for them that honoreth me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So watch this now. Look what he says. He says, whoever honors the father, he will receive honor from the father. So now I just showed you that honoring your mother really honors the father. So really you're honoring the father when you honor the mother. And so God says, if you would honor me, I will honor you. Oh. Okay, 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 okay. Matthew 25, Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Look at verse number 40. Matthew 25, verse number 40. Watch this, watch this. Matthew 25, verse number, number 40. Ooh, watch this. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it unto, me, unto one of the least of them, my brethren, you have what? You have done it unto me. So if I honor you as mama, God says you have done that unto me. But if you dishonor the least of them, you have dishonored him. Oh, my goodness. Amen. It's all connected. It's all connected. Okay, so how, how do I honor my mother? First of all, give her some attention. Somebody say attention. Okay. Somebody say affirmation. affirmation. See, see, I give mama attention and I give her affirmation. I tell her how much I love her. Amen. Through affirmation. Then there is affection. Somebody say affection. Amen. I, I just seen you kiss your mama. Were you kissing your mama? I seen that. Uh huh. That, you you got to give your mama some affection. Amen. Let, you know, hug your mama. Love up on your mama. Let her know how much you love her. And look, look, it, you know, as they're growing up, you know, they, they think it's so silly to hug and to kiss, you know. Oh, mama, I don't want to do that. Look, I'm telling you. Show your mama some affection. Amen. Through some precious moments. There are times that you spend with your mama that you'll never forget. Amen. There's some precious moments that you just spend with mama. Amen. That, that you're making memories that, that you never forget. Keep your promise to your mama. If you said you're going to do something, do it. Amen. Then there ought to be some periodic mentioning through recognitions of investments for your mama. Amen. In other words, you ought to get your mama something. <laughs> your mama got you all the stuff you had through your childhood days. Now that you got a job, you ought to get your mama something. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Look, 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 uh, what, what, two or three years ago, uh, we, we took you on the cruise with us? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I told Gwen, I said, you know what? I want to take your mama on vacation with us. I said, because if, if my mama was alive, I would take my mama on vacation with us. Right. Amen. I said, I want her to come. I want her to have a good time. Don't have to worry about nothing. Amen. Just enjoy yourself. Did you enjoy yourself? <laughs> Amen. I said, we're going to take mama on vacation with us. Amen. That's not the last vacation you're coming with us. You're going to come some more vacations. you wait for it. Huh? <laughs> she said, I'm waiting for it. Praise the Lord. I think I'm just putting myself all right. Praise the Lord. Then, uh, you know, that, that, that what I just told y'all earlier, if you keep your word with your mama, now then put it out in the atmosphere. And I gotta keep my, I'm going to keep my word. You know, I am going to keep my word. Amen. I got, not, the next thing I, do, I have to do is put her on a plane with me. Uh, you ever flew from Miss Dan? Oh, it's going to be a fun time then. Yeah, yeah, we're going to put you on a plane with us, take you somewhere. Amen. Take you somewhere with us. Amen. Okay, then there ought to be some, uh, some provisions manifested. Okay? 
In other words, you ought to provide for your mother. If your mother have a need, you ought to, you ought to be the first one in line to take care of that need. Amen. See, we, we got the system all messed up. The Bible talks about widows, you know, widows. And uh, uh, he said that it shouldn't be the, the world's responsibility or the church's responsibility to take care of the widows. It should be the children that take care of their parents. But we want everybody else to do the job that we should be doing ourselves. Ooh, Jesus. Then there ought to be some pleasant memories. Amen. Some pleasant memories. Now, I pray that today that you have a conviction based upon the revelation that you received today. Amen. When it comes down to your mother's. Now, if you have a conviction of the revelation, then there ought to be a, a, a change in your attitude. <laughs> Amen. There ought to be changing your attitude that, that now you're going to honor your mother like God says you should. Then there ought to be a, a conscious adjustment. I'm going to make every effort now to make sure that every day of my life that I'm going to honor mama. And then finally, there should be a call to action. Amen. Don't just sit here and say, well, Pastor, that was a good lesson about the love of mothers. No, no, you ought to do something about it today. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, love is an action word. It, tr it truly is. Amen? So, so today, and not just today. Today, but not just today. That you take care of your mama real, real good. Okay? Again, today. And not just today. That you learn how to love your mother like she loved you. Oh my goodness. When I think about that mother who wanted us, who told the king, just, just give, give my child away. Because I don't want you to kill my child, split him in the half. That's love. Amen. And all you mothers today, I want y'all to know from the bottom of my heart, I love each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. Because God loves you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I got to stop because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen.